what I really wanted to talk to you guys about today is your fasteners and how they're supposed to look and feel when you go to thread them in and out and uh, the process of actually cleaning your threads after you've had all your machine work done because uh, you can even pay a shop to clean your engine and I'd be hard pressed that they would go through the effort that that you yourself would put into your engine you know only you can put the amount of passion for your engine and nobody else is going to be able to match your uh, attention to detail and you know so basically where I stood with this was I was turning the studs when I got the block back and you know I didn't ask them to clean it so I wasn't you know I couldn't be mad at them but at the same time um, when I had the line hone done and the I had them check the main and the rod journal clearances to give me some numbers so when I go to check them I can compare but the bolts were certainly not threading very smoothly and uh, the reason being is, you know, corrosion, dust, and dirt gets trapped in the threads of the, the female end of the thread. And this creates uh, an inconsistency when you're going to torque the bolts down. And who knows, it could possibly throw off your measurements if you didn't actually get the specific torque spec you needed. Um, the grit will catch the threads and kind of stop it momentarily even though you don't really feel it but it creates a, a breakaway torque where you actually have to give it excess torque to get it to overcome the friction so what I've done I already have done is uh, four or five mains I've only got one bolt left, which is this one here, and that's why I, I was just going to wait until I'm down to the last one. This takes forever to do, but uh, it takes, if you really want to clean it, it takes a good 15 to 20 minutes per bolt to actually have it perfectly clean, you know, at least to my standards, to where I can't feel a single piece of grit or anything. It's just smooth threading, and this bolt here is just super gritty and notchy and I'm just not throwing my motor together like that so at this point the engine is at the very bottom of the cleaning phase I haven't this is certainly kind of like a staging area for the engine until I get everything checked and then um, the blocks gonna get detergent and pressure washed and WD-40 it down until uh, it's ready for fi final assembly. I actually, usually when you spray it down with the pressure washer, you want to go right ahead to assembly. But you got to be careful with these cast iron blocks because they like to rust real fast. So you got to refrain from using compressed air to blow the water out because all that's going to do is evaporate the water fast enough to where it actually oxidizes the steel so you can see you can see rust appear within 30 seconds I swear I've seen it happen so I'm not too worried I mean I'm still trying to maintain a state of cleanliness on the engine uh, but I've just been working my way from the bottom to the top of the engine I haven't even really gotten down here yet but what I've done is just uh, make sure the oil the main uh, oil galleys are wire brushed out. I've got this little fancy tool here to run in and out of the hole. Of course, with the bearings taken out. I've just been. I don't want my fresh line hone to get rusty, so I you got to keep WD-40 on them and just keep things put together as much as you can. The bearings kind of help maintain. Uh, a, a low oxygen and high lubricating environment for those 
machine to surfaces but I still have to do these outer main bolts they're not nearly as big they're like an M8 bolt but it's still um, a structural part of the engine I mean they all do their part so I gotta uh, thread those out basically though what I've done and it's very very crude uh, method of making a thread chaser which is this tool specific for what I'm trying to explain to you guys a thread chaser is not a tap a tap actually cuts threads while uh, while a chaser all it does is just clean the threads it's the exact same size and this is a homemade one I made this is an old bed plate bolt and you can see the difference between the nice ARP studs and an old cap screw but yeah basically what I did is I cut uh, four grooves in they're not perfect but they've done the job very well alright so how I do this and I start by cleaning the stud itself uh, just so I don't forget to do it when I go to thread the thread it back in because it's gonna be a while before you actually thread this back in so uh, you get a nice lint free paper towel these things are great you can shake them in front of the light and you don't see a single drop of uh, lint come out but what I do I mean I don't even gotta hardly put pressure on it and you can see all the dirt and rusty stuff on there so what I do is uh, you don't want to thread in towards the paper towel because it'll dig into it and rip a hole through it and then you get lint that's how you get lint from a lint free paper towel is by tearing it so try not to tear it as much as you can um, so what I do is I take my thumbnail and I catch the first thread between the paper towel and then I just start threading it out and it's a pretty time consuming process but you can see all that grime coming through already so about once it starts looking like that I'll just get, move it to a fresher part of the paper towel just so it ain't just piling up crab, uh, crud yeah, see that's just disgusting but yeah this is the first part that I do and then you can see all that nastiness it's rust and then I'll do it all over again I do it until I don't see any more essentially and I'll do both ends because there's still assembly lube uh, ARP lube on the end of this so the bolt's clean so what you want to do is put it in a bag if I can find one I guess I used them all. Well, uh, rubber glove works pretty good. Just put it in the back or in the glove and uh, keep the dirt from getting on it. All right. So what we're gonna do now is I start by getting the vast majority of the grime and stuff out of the hole. And what I do is I take a, the lint-free paper towel and I just start thread it in there. And you want to make sure you're wearing gloves the whole time because uh, you don't want to get your fingerprints on the iron because it'll rust it out. So I go down as far as I can push it and then I pull it out see all that crap not much on there but I don't think I got a good uh, I don't think I got it all the way down in there uh, so just keep squeezing it down
then the more you compact it, the better it catches the threads. And uh, uh, yeah, it's not that bad, but you can see we got to the bottom that time, and there's some WD-40 and rust mix. So now the threads are kind of dried off. So what I'll do now is take this little uh, brass wire brush, run it down in there. And this really loosens up some of that crap. Unfortunately, these brushes don't have a... I gotta cut the end off of it somehow. Because it doesn't go all the way down as you can see. But if I cut that off, it'll ruin the integrity of the brush and it'll probably fall apart. But that's where this guy comes in handy now. So what I'll do to take it. And I got my uh, in little electric impact here. I cleaned it off prior to all this to make sure no dust comes off and falls in the box. You probably won't be able to see anything on the camera, but there is some stuff in there. I'll run it down the groove. You can see that. That's straight dirt and rust and whatever else. Alright, and then, you see all that? What I'll do now is I'll just wrap the whole bowl in it and kind of compress and rock the bolt back and forth and it kind of gets all that grime out, you can see. So, basically, I do this over and over again until I really stop seeing a lot of that dark dirt and grease. And uh, most of the dirt is at the bottom, which I expect. That's where most of the stuff goes. Uh, I'll end up using compressed air to blow out the holes when it's all said and done. And I'll do a final cleaning of the bolts. But yeah, this is uh, all that stuff is just keeping you from getting a proper torque spec or uh, torque reading it throws it all off so yeah I'll just do that over and over again until I stop seeing some of that grind <laughs>